Cincinnati Bengals, Baltimore Ravens, Week 10 Thursday Night Football Breakdown. Welcome. If you're new and you're here from the socials and you've never been to a full Loeb's Leads YouTube breakdown, especially for Thursday Night Football, make sure you subscribe and join the YouTube family. What we do here is go deep through the coverage data, the run scheme trends, and the overall logistical information for these matchups, injuries, weather, general schematic things to make sure you have every piece of information you need for your fantasy teams, as well as your higher, lower projections. Now, specifically higher, lower projections, that stuff will all be at the end, the end of this video. We're going to go through the information first, give you some backing, help you understand my backing, and then make our projections at the very, very end. If you like that type of stuff, make sure you like this video. But without further ado, let's talk about this matchup because it's a long time coming since Joe Burrow was in Cincinnati, hurt his hand literally almost a year later, back here now looking for, quote-unquote, revenge in a revenge spot. After the Baltimore Ravens fans chanted something, Joe Burrow, on his way out of the stadium. Now, a couple big pieces of information here logistically. Number one, the game is in Baltimore. Primetime Baltimore is great at home in primetime. We know this. Weather, 70 degrees. Cloudy, 20% chance of rain. Not a ton. I wouldn't bank on this being any type of inclement weather game, at least as of right now. Weathermen are paid to get wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I wouldn't bank on it right now. Injuries, a couple things. On the Ravens side, you got Isaiah Likely, who was a DNP. Monday and Tuesday. So, you know, you don't think he's going to play Thursday. Same with Brett Urban. Both of those guys, concussion for Urban. Both of those guys, DNP's Monday, Tuesday. My guess is they don't play Thursday. Bengals side, three crucial players here, crucial. Obviously, T. Higgins, DNP Monday, Tuesday. And this is being recorded about 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. So neither team has released an injury report just yet. But DNP Monday, Tuesday. Again, the trends of the past, generally speaking, unless you log a decent day Wednesday, you're not going to play. B.J. Hill is the other big one. DNP Monday, Tuesday. Is it a rest thing on a short week for an older guy? We wait to see, but that would be a huge loss, and there are some trends with the run scheme data without B.J. Hill because there's been a couple games this year where B.J. Hill has played limited snaps. Very, very important to note that. Orlando Brown, limited Tuesday. My guess is he plays. Wait to see about that. But that's the big information you guys need to know logistically. Let's talk about this coverage data. So we'll start with the Baltimore Ravens secondary. If you guys have never seen a map like this before, uh, this is the coverage matrix for every team in the NFL. It tells you how much they play zone, how much they play man. And anytime a tip has a, has a pretty heavy way in terms of, oh, they play a lot of man or they play a lot of zone, it's really good for us to find trends. Like last week, Thursday Night Football, our biggest trend, we know the Jets love to play man, right? There weren't a ton of Texans receivers and a ton of information about Texans receivers against man. But one thing, Jets man coverage, CJ Stroud loves to run the ball. One of our favorite picks, probably our best pick last weekend, C.J. Stroud rushing yard. So this stuff does matter. But what stinks about the Ravens secondary is regardless of who's playing, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, they had games without Marlon Humphrey, had games without Nate Wiggins. They don't really change what they do. It's a lot of zone, probably two-thirds, and a decent amount of man, one-third. They're pretty balanced in what they do. Even against the Bengals a couple weeks ago, pretty balanced in what they did. Maybe they throw some new things out there this week, but I highly doubt they – dramatically change what they do, they still allow the most dropbacks in the NFL. They're still allowing a ton of pass yards. They're still allowing a lot of receiving yards. But the real question is, where are those yards going? Because you look at guys like Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, who again probably is not going to play this week, Mike Kosicki, and they put together some big games. Like we talked about Jamar Chase four weeks ago. Yeah, week five, four weeks ago, 193 yards. And you look at where the Ravens are being targeted, highly out wide. It's the 12th highest rate in the NFL while being targeted at the seventh lowest rate in the slot. The real question is what happens when T Higgins doesn't, doesn't play? Does that change the route data? Does that change what Jamar Chase does? It's very interesting because it does, but it doesn't really matter, especially against the Baltimore Ravens. Like I was looking at some of the trends here. It doesn't really matter what they do, at least offensively for the Cincinnati Bengals, when T. Higgins isn't playing when it relates to the routes, because Jamar Chase is obviously their leading route runner. And without T. Higgins, Jamar Chase is running about 62% of his routes out wide. That's about 32-ish percent from the slot. Obviously, you have some backfield routes as well. But Jamar Chase is running a lot of his routes out wide compared to in the slot, right? What I'm going to show you guys right now is the slot rates for Jamar Chase without T Higgins in the lineup. And you can see he has the most slot routes on his team tied with Mike Kosicki. Now, the interesting thing here is 
37.6% of his routes came from the slot, right? And that's a good amount. It's more than the 32% I just mentioned with T. Higgins in the lineup. <clears throat> and as a result, his out wide route running rate is going to decrease. It's 58.7%. So he's running more routes in the slot when T. Higgins doesn't play. And you look at the Baltimore Ravens, again, they're being targeted at the 12th highest rate on the outside and the seventh lowest rate on the inside when it relates to at least wide receivers and tight ends, I guess, running routes from the slot and out wide. So it should matter for Jamar Chase, right? Guys, I looked at the numbers for Jamar Chase's slot route running against the Baltimore Ravens. He had more yards in that 193-yard game four weeks ago from the slot than out wide. Even though he had more targets and more catches on the outside, he had 111 yards from the slot. Crazy, like eight point something yards per route run. It doesn't matter for a guy like Jamar Chase is what I'm trying to say. So one of my favorite projections, which again, we will talk about at the end, is Jamar Chase yards and fantasy points. Love that on a lot of different regards. But another guy I want to look at here, the out wide rate, again, assuming that T. Higgins is out, is Andre Yoshivas, right? 70.7% of his routes from our routes without T. Higgins are from the outside. 10 targets outside, 13 overall. Like Joe Burrow is going to try to get this guy the football. And when you look at the Ravens' run defense, third fewest rush attempts per game, fewest rush yards per game, fewest rush yards per carry. Bengals, bottom 10 in rush attempts, bottom 10 in rush yards per game, bottom 10 in rush yards per carry. Bengals can't and won't run the ball. Ravens will stop the run. So to me, this is a big Bengals pass fest. And I think when you look at Yoshi Voss being projected, 19, I believe, 20 yards. We'll talk about the full projections at the end again. It's just a little bit too low. So I'm fascinated by Yoshi Voss on the outside. I love Jamar Chase overall against his secondary. And I'm staying away from guys like Chase Brown. I know you look at the big, big game from last week. And it is possible to run on the Ravens. We've seen it a couple times. Not a lot, though. Overall, they're very good. I'm staying away from Chase Brown in the rushing world. Nothing really points me to Mike Gesicki in the passing world, at least a ton. So I am very, very interested to see what Andre Yoshivas and Jamar Chase can do, assuming T. Higgins is out. Now, if T. Higgins is in, to me, this is not necessarily a carbon copy of their matchup from four weeks ago, but it's pretty close. I'm going to lean into both of those guys a little bit, especially because of what the Ravens have been able to allow outside and are stopping on the inside. So that's Cincinnati Bengals offense. They're going to pass a lot. They're going to throw the ball out wide when they do. It's probably going to be Andre Yoshivas and Jamar Chase, assuming T Higgins is out. And yes, we know, okay, the Ravens don't, don't allow a ton of slot targets. They're not horrible against the slot, but the targets just straight up aren't there. Fifth fewest in the league. Jamar Chase is going to run more outs from his slot. Doesn't really matter if it's Jamar Chase running those routes because he is a supreme talent. He's better than any player in that Ravens secondary, even Kyle Hamilton. I know that's crazy to say, but I do think so. Jamar Chase, Andre Yoshivas in that Bengals world. And I do like Joe Burrow yards just in general as well. We'll talk about that at the very end with the specific numbers, the four players I'm going to be on. But that is how it looks in the past game for a team like the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Baltimore Ravens is another very, very interesting thing because we know what their identity is. We know what they like to do offensively. You're adding two new cards to the deck this week. And it's not just Deontay Johnson. Everybody talks about Deontay Johnson. And you know, rightfully so. Like, it's a big addition for the Ravens. They needed another piece, I thought, on the outside or in the receiver room to just help Lamar Jackson a little bit, as if the MVP candidate, MVP frontrunner right now, needed any more help. Yeah, I mean, I do think it's going to help him, believe it or not. But Keaton Mitchell, I don't want everybody to forget that. Keaton Mitchell is a very, very big addition to this team. We'll talk about the Ravens' run offense against Cincinnati Bengals' run defense after we break down what they do coverage-wise. Now, we're not going to go back into the coverage matrix because there isn't another big tip with the Bengals. So, 10th most zone overall in the NFL, but I was looking at the trends for the Bengals-Ravens game from Week 5. The Bengals, as the game went on, played less zone because Lamar was cooking them in zone. For, for reference... He averaged 0.94 fantasy points against zone coverage in the Bengals in the second half. That's either essentially a 22 yard pass play or a what 20 or a nine yard run, a 10 yard run. Every single time the Bengals dropped in zone, every single time. My guess is we won't see as much zone, but the Bengals aren't going to go away from what they've been doing. And you can't play man at least a ton against Lamar Jackson because he's going to pull the ball and run. That's what's going to happen. That's what happens when you play man. So I think again, defensively, it's going to be very, very similar. You can't really lean too much into what the Ravens do against zone. If Isaiah likely doesn't play, it's another very interesting thing with Mark Andrews. 
especially because last five games, Bengals are giving up the second most yards, second most catches to opposing tight ends. Now, Andrews had four for 55 last time these two teams played. I worry about leading into a guy like Mark Andrews because I think that's a little more volatile. But Cincinnati Bengals are being targeted at the second highest rate out wide in the NFL. And I look back at this game. Zay Flowers, who had 100 plus yards last time they played, and Rashad Bateman each had seven out wide targets last time they played. Now, we talked about one of those cards getting added to the fold. It's Deontay Johnson. You can see on the screen behind me. Deontay Johnson, when you're looking at wide routes, and again, he played for the Panthers. This is very, very much part of what the Panthers did, and this is not a Raven schematic thing, but in one less game or in two less games, more out wide routes than Zay Flowers, and Zay Flowers has double the slot routes that Deontay Johnson does. So when you look at the Bengals who don't allow a ton of yards to the slot, again, it's kind of like Jamar Chase. You're kind of pushed away a little bit. You're kind of leaning away from a guy like Zay Flowers, even though he's been unbelievable the past few weeks because the numbers say he should be targeted less, hypothetically, if he lines up more in the slot and less on the outside, which should happen if Deontay Johnson plays. I'm not going to sit here and say, I don't think that's going to happen. It should happen if Deontay Johnson plays. But I worry about the Bengals just straight up being able to cover Zay Flowers. Like, there's a reason that Zay Flowers has been so good. There's a reason that Lamar Jackson continues to look his way. He's a talented player. And again, I think when it comes down to a guy like Jamar Chase against the Ravens secondary, he's better than any of those DBs. I don't think it's crazy to say Zay Flowers is better than any of the Bengals DBs. And right now, I don't know how much Deontay Johnson is going to play. If he's out there for 50% of snaps, I don't think that significantly takes away from Zay Flowers and what he can do. Now, the other very interesting aspect to this, which I think I'm going to lean into a little bit more, I do like Zay Flowers' yards, is the Bengals' run defense against Cincinnati Bengals, or Baltimore Ravens' run offense. Like, Ravens' most yards per carry, most yards per game, second most rushing attempts per game behind Philly. Cincinnati, middle of the pack overall, I'd say. 15th most rush yards per game. However, fourth most rush attempts. So they're facing the run a lot, but fifth fewest yards per carry. So it means teams are going to have to run the ball a lot against Cincy, whether it's, you know, they play a lot of too high safety and it's more advantageous for the run game or what. Teams are going to have to run the ball against the Bengals. They're going to make you run the ball, but they're not wildly efficient against it. And again, they're worse against man gap. Ravens run more man gap, but the Ravens are way better in zone. So to me, I look at this and I'm, I need some edge. I need some edge in this run game for me to lean into Derrick Henry because I think this is going to be a Ravens win, maybe a moderately comfortable win, but a Ravens decently comfortable win where they're going to be able to take the air out of the football at the end of the game. That will lean into Derrick Henry. Well, here's my lean. B.J. Hill ribs injury. He's a DNP Tuesday. Again, it's being recorded at 1-ish p.m. on Wednesday, so we don't necessarily know if B.J. Hill – is going to play, is not going to play. we got to stay up to date on that stuff. But there have been a couple games where B.J. Hill did not play the full game. He was injured or played, let's see, 18% of snaps one game, 22% of snaps one game, and then last week, 20% of snaps. So last week, I kind of throw to the side because the Raiders were losing by so much. They don't really have a dynamic run game. You can't lean into that too much. But you look at week two when he played 22% of snaps. You had Isaiah Pacheco with 90 yards. You look at week five against Cincinnati when he played 18% of snaps. You had Derrick Henry with 92 yards. Teams will lean into the run more without your arguably best run defender playing. Teams will probably be more efficient, to be honest with you, without your best run defender playing. And if I'm the Baltimore Ravens, as much as I like the matchups I have on the outside and as much as I like the matchups I have in the secondary, I'm going to lean into the run game because it's what I do. My opinion, probably the best run defense or run team in the NFL right now, going up against a run defense that, you know, all things considered, middle of the pack. So I think Ravens keep this game close or even pull away, which I think is going to happen. Derrick Henry should have plenty of volume. And I trust that volume against a run defense that has not been great, at least without BJ Hill, for a big Derrick Henry game. Dare I say it? I don't know. Primetime at home, Derrick Henry's had 100 plus yards three or four times. I like Derrick Henry, generally speaking, but we'll talk about the four picks I like the most right now. Now, if you guys are looking to make picks on the game, you can click the link in the description here and join Sleeper. They will match your first deposit up to $1,500, as well as give you a free projection of Joe Burrow having at least one yard. He's obviously going to have a yard in that Thursday night game. All you need to do is join with code LEADS, L-E-A-D-S. They'll match that deposit. You'll get a free pick. But the four picks I like, based on what we talked about, we'll do a little synopsis at the end. 
right now on sleeper, Andre Yoshi Voss, at least 19 and a half receiving yards. And again, these are totally subject to change when that big pick video drops roughly 12 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. That will be the final, but I don't see myself change any of these. Jamar Chase, at least 18.5 fantasy points. Derrick Henry, at least 91.5 rushing yards. And Zay Flowers, at least 60.5 receiving yards. So if you guys are looking to make picks on the game, that's where I'm leaning early. Depends when you're seeing this video, obviously. They'll go up, they'll go down. I definitely check it out if you guys haven't already. But again, the overall synopsis of this, we talk about the Baltimore Ravens, what they like to do defensively. They have been bad against the pass. That's the bottom line. Joe Burrow's been pretty good, playing like an MVP candidate. I think if they had a couple more wins, he would be a legitimate MVP candidate. What the Ravens do defensively doesn't really change week to week. Two-thirds zone, one-third man, so you can't really lean a specific way in this Bengals secondary, but the bottom line is Jamar Chase has been playing out of his mind. He had 193 yards last time these two teams played, and he had more of his yards from the less advantageous spot on the field. So I think Jamar Chase has a big one. T. Higgins, DNP Tuesday. My guess is he doesn't play Thursday. Depends on when you're seeing this video. If T. Higgins does play, though, I will say, I'm going to lean into his yards a little bit. I'm going to see what it's at. We'll 100% tweet it out on X at Lobes Leads. Make sure you're following there too. But I'm going to lean into that a little bit. But assuming Higgins is out, for me, I look at Andre Yoshivas, who's 10 targets on the outside without T. Higgins, 70.7% of his routes coming on the outside without T. Higgins. A projection of 19.5 yards is just too low. On the other side, Bengals defense is not great against out wide wide receivers. And that's usually been Zay Flowers. But now you add Deontay Johnson, who I think is more of an out wide threat than Zay Flowers is. Zay Flowers probably will have more slot routes. Do I really get scared away because of how well Zay Flowers is playing? No, I don't think so. And again, I think Zay Flowers will have more out wide routes than given credit for. I think Deontay Johnson probably won't play 60 plus percent of snaps. Like I think he'll get eased in a little bit. Same with Keaton Mitchell. I know I talked about him a little earlier. I talked about that Ravens run defense without even mentioning his name. That's how much I think he's going to be a factor, at least in this game, right? In the run game. But I trust Zay Flowers against secondary. He had a hundred plus yards in against uh, four weeks ago. And then Derrick Henry in a game where I think it's either going to be close to the Ravens are going to be able to blow him out, pull away against a run defense, likely without their best run stopper. I trust Derrick Henry. I trust the dynamic ability of this run offense. That's Those are my four. That's what I'm leaning. Obviously, you guys let me know which four you like the most in the comments. And any fantasy-specific questions for your matchups, make sure you comment them so I can answer them below in this video. And again, if you guys are new and you're not subscribed, you enjoy this video, make sure you do. Make sure you like this video as well. Good luck to you guys on Thursday Night Football with your fantasy teams and your higher lower projections. As always, you can write them below on Sleeper. Code leads. God bless you guys. I will see you next time.